Okay, so now that you got to jump on it here, how about part A? Immediately following, uh, following the establishment of the new city, we got what and what? Where's the better spot to live? The new one. The new one. Okay, so we've got uh, this single curve, 12 million person city starts off, government goes one. And why did the utility levels change like this? What uh, what are the the uh, polling competing forces with the big city versus the small city that ends up ultimately leading to the shape of our utility? <coughs> Well, you can explain it either way, but utilities going up, well, that's right? As we up. as we increase the the size, and then it starts going down as we increase yeah, the size. Localization and uh, urbanization economy is going on that increases the utility up to a certain point, and then at that point, the this economy is a scale <coughs> of pollution and of uh, uh, traffic, yes. traffic, traffic, traffic and yeah. congestion. So we had, and then. What was giving you the, the upward tick? Did you get one of these? Yeah, you did. Okay. What was giving the upward tick? So congestion's working against. Yeah, but more specifically, I, heard, I, I don't think I heard him say it. What does that get you? What did those economies get you? Because the economies are scale. Yeah, what does the agglomeration give you? The, the localization and urbanization, what does it do to you directly, I guess, if you're participating in the labor force. Higher, Higher wages. wages. Wages get driven up because they get bid up by competing. So when we have more employers clustered together in one spot, they're bidding to get you, right? So they're kind of bid up the wages. Uh, not only that, they have to bid up the wages because it's more expensive to live in the city to lure you away from the rural area they need to keep increasing wage. So we kind of got a couple things going up there um, that are driving up the wage. All right, so as the workforce goes up, the agglomeration helps boost up your wage, but congestion starts to kick in and it's not so fun sitting in traffic for 45 minutes. And so those are the two competing forces at work. And that's why we've got this upside down <coughs> U shape. All right, so We've got the 30 and 32, position N, position D, and use arrows to indicate the direction of movement. <laughs> What's happening in our small city? It's getting bigger. It's starting to get bigger. And why is it getting bigger? Now we got to go back to how it's changing. Because the people in the old city have, uh, they look at the new city and they're like, hey, it's better over there. So yes. There. Okay, so that's the key part. There's a fixed pool of people is the assumption of the model here. We're not importing bodies into it. We've got 12 million people where the, mo the model is fixing the uh, two cities that there's, remember, assume that the number of cities remains at two, so we're not allowing the development of new cities. So we're trying to really hone in on the migration patterns, right? The migration patterns in the two. And so in the big city, this is my little drawing here, in the big city, since it's lower utility and higher here, these people start to exit, so they start to leave, and this city starts to shrink. This city starts to grow, and it's still going up, and if we start to follow that pattern, we're heading up for both people, people in each city uh, get, getting better off. So in the long run equilibrium, any questions on that, first of all? So it, that's an important uh, takeaway from this is Again, holding a certain number of things fixed, that would be the migration pattern that we'd expect. So in the long run, the workforce of the new city, six, six, 
six, north first of the old city. Six. Also six. So we just kind of want to start to reason out. <laughs> you can go a million at a time. And if we get to six, why are, why are you here? Right, there's still incentive to migrate. So these guys make it to here first, which is great for them for the time being, but it's it's transitory. It's 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 not a it's a temporary situation, not a permanent one. That migration is going to continue until they converge in on each other, um, and so we end up on the negatively sloped portion of the utility curve, and it's a steady state equilibrium for the uh, size of the city, given these assumptions of this model. Um, can you just repeat the answers really quick? And then you... uh, six. So you're, if you start to go up here, we've got each city at six oh, and like, 55. No, like the size of the 655, city is 655. And then the utility is the. Um, um, so I guess thinking about the, the whole rational expectation, I guess. If, I guess if people understand this, wouldn't they be in the old city and say, all right, so everybody's going to leave and we're all going to end up in the same and you know, have the same utilities, so there's no incentive to move? Um, if, if, go ahead, tell us. Oh, I was just going to say, everybody has there, like, even if they think everybody's going to move, like, I don't know, if you eventually saw that people are moving, you're still going to want to move because the utility is still higher. And so if nobody's moving, like, if you're expecting people to move, but then no, like, everyone's yeah. expecting that, and then nobody moves, and eventually people will and, and that's, um, you know, start starting to go outside of this model, of course, but um, there's still a first mover advantage even with this model, because if you are the first one to get out, then you'll jump up to this higher level of utility, which is much higher than this level. So even if you think that that's kind of the end game, um, if we started to add more detail to this, moving first gives you a little bit longer term utility as well. Most people don't usually think of that common model, so they'll probably just be like, hey, this place is a little bit crowded and I don't like it here. <laughs> right, this traffic sucks, I'm out of here. And, and look at how happy these people are in this, in this place. All right, um, let's go to number nine. I wanted to do this one together. Uh, if you guys don't have your books, that's all right. Well, here, I'll just put it up here. You want to just write that on the back of this? Uh, number nine, sure, that's fine. It, it's going to be a little bit interactive. So some people claim that state capitals, Sacramento, Salem, and Olympia are boring in the sense that they have smaller variety of goods and services than cities of equal size. Check a map and provide the explanation as to why these cities could be boring. So that would be kind of fun to just go to Google Maps here or whatever your preferred map function is. Boring is a pretty good term. <laughs> Salem, Oregon. Yeah, let's talk about that. What do you think? Salem, Oregon's got a lot of uh, culture. You want to go to Oregon? I've been there and let's go I, there. I'll tell you, it's interesting. Almost any one of these capital cities that we've been to. Yeah, hold on. It's all new. <laughs> Topeka's a capital city and it sucks. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> I would. Okay, take here's. Some you guys don't have the time. Do you think Topeka? Maybe it's more. It's very hard to see. Even I don't care. Everyone just does what they want. They can crap on my small town. So there's Salem. Is it because it's, it's near Portland? There's Salem. They have an export market as far as labor goes, and so people are going to Portland to work. Well, that's what, first you got to yeah think about what uh, think about what um, what boring means, I guess. So there's Salem. I guess I'm curious as to how far that actually is from Portland. Well, it looks like it's 50 miles. Yeah, there's probably a scale there. Let me just do. Uh, what's the other one? I mean, I just Sacramento, California. Sacramento, <coughs> California. Sacramento. Okay, and there's the scale down here. Is ten miles is that distance? 
So it looks like it's and by the town. I think they're both from Orange. Yeah, that's not really any major miles. cities. And what do we got? Olympia? Olympia, Washington. So what have we been starting to, uh, now this thing's totally washed. 